Welcome back. It is time for another Intrigue Journal. <sighs> Sorry, I have I'm burping up uh, hot dogs. <laughs> I apologize. It was good. It's time for another Intrigue Journal with the intriguing Juliana. Hello. Good morning, good morning, guys. Well, last week, Sean Paul was talking about the intriguing things that happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to expand on one of them, UFOs. Because why not? It's 2020. Of course. Well, more specifically, the, the government's transparency about UFOs, which we're now going to call UAPs, OK? It all Do came we have up too. I know <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. It all came about with this brow-raising announcement that they made that they created this task force to investigate. I need that slide. That let's first see. Slide. We'll skip over. Yeah. And, but can you explain you what UAP stands for again? Yes, unidentified aerial phenomenon. That's hmm. the task force. It's very hard to say. Yes, I know. it is. And why? Why the transparency now? It could have been motivated by the release of three videos that were taken by the U.S. Navy. Mm -hmm. These are kind of blurry. These are just the stills. We're going to get back to that later. But of these videos that were released, Harry Reid tweets out. Let's take a look at that. I think we have a video. It's video. Maybe it's video A. Harry Reid tweets out about it. Okay. That. It basically tells us that they know, they're aware of these goings on, and he's saying that, that we need more transparency about it. Okay, okay here's, we're looking at that okay. on the screen. There we go. Okay, so I didn't is, hear anything, so there we go. <laughs> this is not the first, the first time that we've had a task force, okay? Harry Reid actually, we can go back to that other slide that we had up there for a moment. Harry Reid actually was funded this second one, this Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, ATIP, they call it. Hmm. Prior to that, it was Blue Book. They were, they were in the shadows for a while then. Now they've been declassified. But when it gets interesting, this story, because a man by the name of Lou Elizondo actually headed up that last program, that ATIP program. Mm -hmm. And I'll go to the next slide, please. Lou Elizondo, and he decides that there's not enough transparency, that they're not taking it seriously enough, these threats. So he decides to leave his post and right about that time, and shortly thereafter, is when these videos get leaked, okay? Mm -hmm. He ends up becoming a key player, playing a key role in Identified, a History Channel program. Okay, there's a lot of confusion over the release of the videos. Now, some will say that it's intentional the confusion. Investigative reporters like Annie Jacobs, and I've talked about her before, will say that the government, government specifically tries to create these disinformation campaigns to mm. confuse the enemy or the public, who knows, you know? Yeah. So the fact that the videos came out right around the time Elizondo leaves his post mm -hmm. suggests maybe he arranged for that ahead of time. Just keep that in mind as we go through the of timeline, okay? okay? This is what we know. I'll go to my timeline slide here. Um, the New York Times first puts out this, this story in 2017 it's it's sort of quietly embedded within an online uh, story somebody pays attention they call the DOD Department of Defense denies the release okay there's nothing in the video that shows declassified so it makes you wonder is it real is it, is it mm -hmm. just fake mm -hmm. so there's always some like question right. about there it's muddy 2019 the US Navy acknowledges that these are the real deal these videos mm. 2020 just in April, is not, it's not until then that the Pentagon officially releases the video and they establish the task force. Now with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the first video. This is from 2004. This is uh, by, taken by Navy pilots above, aboard the USS Nimitz. I have never seen anything in my life that had the performance, the acceleration, and it's moving around left, right, forward, back. The radar immediately starts getting jammed. All of a sudden, it takes off. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he, so that was Commander Fravor, mm -hmm. and he and his team were they were on a routine training mission when they were directed to go 60 miles away because the, they had seen on radar objects going from 80,000 feet to 20,000 feet in a snap and then disappearing. So they go to this area. It's it's about 100 miles southwest of San Diego, mm -hmm. and the first thing they see is a disturbance in the water. It looks like a submarine just went under. Next, they notice almost suddenly. Uh, what is now described commonly as a tic-tac, because it looks like a tic-tac, it, <laughs> only oh it's about 40 feet long, all right? And it mm. moves, it has, it has no sense of propulsion, no heat signature, it moves erratically. Commander Fravor s decides to go towards it, and that's when it shoots off. Wow. All right, the other thing mm. is, is that <laughs> these things go underwater. 
This Tic Tac oh my was picked up by a submarine in the area going 70 knots. How, wow. how is this possible? That, Where, how did this stuff come out? Okay, let's go to the next, the next two videos. They're combined. This is from 2015, and it is from Navy pilots aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. This is off of the East Coast. So they're seeing different forms. Not they, they didn't see the tic tac so much. They have they're seeing. Um, please the next slide so we can see the form. There we go. Uh -huh. So they're seeing a top light form. They're seeing the what they describe as a cube within a cylinder. We're going to get to the last one shortly. Mm -hmm. So they see these cubes in the V formation. Five of them. At one point, one of the cubes goes in between two aircraft so close within 150 feet. They decide to file a report um, because this you know they they don't really know what it is. Is this part of our training? Right. Is this is this what are we yeah. seeing here? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that a lot of these UAPs are found at military training bases, oh. around nuclear missile areas, mm -hmm. and, and above water. Okay? Interesting. Wow. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. very, it's very that. strange. Okay, so why the acronym, though? Why did they change from UFO to UAP? Yeah. Now, some people will say they want to keep it more general. Annie Jacobson might tell you they want to distance themselves from the idea of extraterrestrials. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they, maybe they think, or they actually have psychological committees that have decided that the American public can't handle, they can't handle this information, it would cause mass hysteria, and it's a national threat. So have you heard of COVID-19? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I yeah. think we can handle it. <laughs> I think we don't need them to decide what we can and handle. So, thank we you. Can. Well, maybe okay. that's why they now came up with it. And yeah. they're like, okay, they can handle a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. But okay. there, there are people who have proposed that it has something to do with FOIA, Freedom of Information Act. When you file these FOIA oh. requests, you have to have the right language. You have to ask the right questions. Uh -huh. So when they control the language, they also control the narrative. Uh-huh. That's that right. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Of course they yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the last video. It's video D, and this is a uh, this uh, pilot, commercial pilot, up in this is above Columbia, oh. and he sees one of these cubes. Now, I can't actually confirm, you know, if this is real or not. You just never know. You have to take everything kind of with a grain of salt, right? What? what do you guys think, though? Do you think this is our technology? Do you, what do you think? See, that's what I was going back and forth on. Yeah. Okay, what if it's our technology they're testing, people have seen it, now they have to control the narrative, like you said, yeah. and then put this UAP into place, and then, like you said, confusion. So many questions. Then right. you don't know right. what's real, and you right. think everything's, yeah. well, the conspiracy theorists will think it's real, other people yeah. will think it's fake, so. You have people who have credibility that have been in the Air Force and different things that have written books and different things like that. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I don't know. Well, let me ask you this, though. Okay, it's said that the military is 10 to 20 years ahead of what the public knows, mm -hmm. but did we have technology like this no. in the 50s? <laughs> no. Okay, because in 1952, World War II pilots reported seeing what they describe as Foo Fighter fireballs in the air, oh. harassing them on their wings wow. in front of them, wow. different color lighted balls, red, green, white. And, and they just, they thought it was a secret German weapon that they kind of dismissed later on as being a mass hallucination. Oh my goodness. But do you remember with our NASA talk how once the war ended, Russia and the U.S. It was a it was a race to get to the German scientists because they yeah. had they had technology. They had yeah. technology. It's interesting. So it really is. Next okay. week we're going to get closer to home. Okay, closer uh, to home. Okay. And then I just feel like if we had aliens, they would have come to us by now. That's all I'm saying. Why wait so long? That's true. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jill. All right. Well, let's recap. So okay. so last week we talked about how the Pentagon released the that they had establish this new UAP task force, okay? Um, let's go to that first slide, there we go. Establishment of the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, okay? And this is on the heels of Navy, Navy pilots seeing different types of aerial phenomenon. Um, 
they have they've seen things that look like tic tacs, things that look like tops. They've seen cubes and spheres, as well as these fireball things. Okay, <laughs> so scary. And, and all of them have <laughs> exactly all of them have almost as scary as COVID nineteen. Instant velocity, <laughs> instant acceleration. There's no heat signature. They move erratically, very fast. The military is not the only people who are seeing these, all right? There are also sightings off of the coast of Baja, California, Mexico. Real hot spot here. This is Guadalupe Island. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, the 2004 incident we talked about last week where they saw the Tic Tacs was southwest of San Diego. Mm. And so this is, just seems like a real hot area. Mm. Now, last week we talked about Lou Elizondo. He, is for, he was formerly on the task force. A, a, a task force that was in the shadows and he came out joined the show or helped start this show unidentified and in doing so he is learning a lot more he goes to Mexico to meet with a pilot and some fishermen mm -hmm. and so this Mexican pilot here says he's seen these tic tacs he, he describes them exactly like the pilots did he also talks to fishermen who say Suddenly, it came out and dove into the water. Fishermen have seen lights under the water. They claim to see things coming out of the sky, hovering over the water, and then splashing inside of it. Is it ours? Is it ours? We talked about this last week. Could this be our technology yeah. or somebody else's? Mm -hmm. Like I said last week, it's said that the military is 10 to 20 years ahead of what the public is aware of. But were they that far ahead in the 50s? Because in 1952, ab aboard the USS Wisconsin, they saw USOs, a new acronym for you. Okay. USO stands for, let me get this right, Unidentified Submerged Object. Okay? Okay. USO. <laughs> USO. Okay. So, so they've seen strange round craft flying above and below the water. This is 1952. Wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, and this was off the coast of Denmark, I guess it is. Amazing. So is it ours? Is it not ours? Maybe it's a combination of ours and aliens. Could that be? Possible. Let's go to the next. Are we working together? Possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're working together. This is a scholar and professor. Her name is D.W. Pasulka. She has written American Cosmic, and she has interviewed scientists who believe their innovative technologies are inspired by alien crafts. Mm -hmm. huh. Now, just kind of going back to the Lou, Lou Elizondo, Guy, he interviews Italian operative, you could call him the equivalent of a Navy SEAL, who described to him a 2004 incident where uh, a UFO or a, a UAP mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. shot a ray at one of their helicopters, ruined the rotors, I guess. Oh! And he, according to him, he says they have discovered that when the object has to use its energy weapons, he says, <laughs> we can hit them with uh, some kind of uranium, some kind of uranium, uranium we uh, weaponry that they have. Suggesting my point that maybe somebody does have their technology. Maybe they've shot it down. Maybe we have some of their artifacts. Oh. Interesting. Who is to say? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go a little farther out into the solar system. Interstellar object. Ua mua mua. I'm oh. probably saying that all wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I like it though. I like it. Sounds very melodic. <laughs> this is, um, it's Hawaiian, I guess, because uh, Hawaiian Observatory is the one who found it. So it's the first known interstellar object. We saw it for 34 days in 2017. Now, hmm. some people think this was an alien probe. This is actually an artist rendering. We don't know exactly what it looks like, okay? Um, but it does, it, it travels it, in appears to be like some t kind of technology we have created ourselves that they call light sail or solar sail and it's operated off of it, it is propelled by basically the sun mm, okay. so it goes it goes it went towards the sun really close and then shot off and went away really close towards the sun really close so mm, the closer wow. it got to the sun it probably get, got more energy and then it was like okay we have power to go poop. exactly yeah but who can get and really it, close it, to the sun <laughs> Right. I'm just saying. And it doesn't, it doesn't act like a comet. It doesn't have a tail or a torque. It doesn't look like any of our asteroids. Like wings or anything. Right, right. right yeah. And, but who operates these things? Are they somebody inside of them? Yeah, like the other aircraft we talked about last week, too. Mm -hmm. It's so confusing. So I have a couple of friends. I, have a, I haven't seen anything myself, but I have two friends, one who videotaped something, which I don't have, and one who drew me a picture. So he... <laughs> 
he didn't get a picture of it. He and his dad were driving down the highway, but they were really close to Area 51. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they looked off to the left. They were on their way to Utah, and they saw these two shiny crafts. He doesn't know if they were the same size or if one was further in the distance mm -hmm. or if they were different sizes. But he described them as being so beautiful, metallic, chrome, just wow. in his magical mind. Mm -hmm. What occurred to him was that this could be camouflaged in the sky. It could reflect, you know, maybe the clouds if it was uh, up high enough. Mm -hmm. He actually, they turned around to go back. His dad didn't want to because he was, he, was, he was afraid of that, but by the time they got back, it, it was gone. But wow. just amazing. Um, but let's go local. Have you guys been to the lake uh, lately? Kelly sure. has yeah, every have. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get to that. So this is June 14, 2014. This is Miriam Woods. This, this man goes out of his house at 10 a.m. in Taney County and sees this luminescent craft in the air, hovering in the air. And he says that the underside is reflecting the sky above. I don't know how that works out. But, right. Which begs the question, how could he see it if it's cloaked, right? Yeah, Just how? Not, not doing a very good job, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> They're still working out their technology. I don't yeah. know. Okay, so over the lake, we have a video <gasps> of a okay. UFO over, over Table Rock Lake. Is it over Kelly's boat? <laughs> okay. It's hard to see. Yeah, I'm trying see to see it. this. What is going on? Is that just light in the sky? Mm -hmm. When was this, Julianne? I gotta get closer to this. This was... I'm looking close. Okay. It says on the Can't day. give you the exact date. Is that what that's talking about? Yeah, but I figured it out, but it was like... If that's over the lake, Julianne, could that just be a reflection of Kelly's bling on her bathing suit? <laughs> <laughs> it is so small. <laughs> I admit it was it, mine. It was, it was July 2013. I just remembered now. Oh, okay. 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 And wow. so it does, it moves erratically yes. fast. Yeah. Like, like the military pilots describe. Mm -hmm. It also reminds me of, like we talked about last week, those balls of fire that were reported mm -hmm. by World War II pilots. Scary, yeah. right? Oh, that is so yeah. Really unusual. Yeah. And I don't think that was a hoax because you could tell they were, they didn't, those two didn't know each other. They yeah. were kind of trying to figure it out in their minds yeah. as they watched this. So. Would you like to see one? <laughs> well, I kind of would just because she's got, her and so yeah. got me so intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> would I be scared? Probably. Right. Yeah. Okay. What, okay, so you guys have been to the lake. Have you been in the water? Sure. Yeah, she has. You go in the water? Yeah. Okay. Are you okay. going to make me stay out of the water? <laughs> let's, let's, so so this, is, this is July. Oh, this is the July 20, 2013 one. Okay, that last one I think was 2015 or 14. But all right, so this is a silver ball thing that is seen in the water. They're, they're on the lake. His, the, his wife gets warm. She reaches down, puts some water in her arm, and sees what I, I would imagine would look maybe like a submarine. Um, the way it's described, at least 10 feet across, slowly moving away. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that? Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> so, I'm still going in the water. Think year. twice, though, Kel. Just, I'm, I'm just saying, the water. bring your ray gun. <laughs> there you go. Okay. This is wild. Julianne, you've intrigued us yes, yet again. Yes, have. Oh, Another reason I won't go in the lake. <laughs> Thank you. You want to go out on the boat? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't. Thanks so much for watching. We would love to have you as a subscriber. Please give us a thumbs up and post your comments below.